Vasishta has been telling us how we can transcend false notions of I and mind. I and mine. Although I think it should really be I and the world. Um, and there are seven steps. There are seven steps which lead us into this ignorance and seven steps which can lead us out. And um, I was pointing out also that liberation is a practice. According to the Yoga Vasishta here, uh, liberation can be disturbed. It's not something which is a once and for all thing, as is sometimes commonly believed or commonly advertised even. The state of self-knowledge, this is liberation, the state of self-knowledge is that in which there is no mental agitation, neither distraction nor dullness of mind, neither egotism nor perception of diversity. So there's neither distraction nor dullness of mind. It's when the attention is not going all over the place. It's actually settled in itself. And he says neither dullness of mind. The um, You can get into a bit of a pleasant stupor sometimes in, in meditation, even when you're uh, in a state of concentration. There's neither egotism nor perception of diversity. So there's neither, you're neither caught up with any notion of yourself and you're not caught up in any notions of the world. The delusion that veils this self-knowledge is sevenfold. Seed state of wakefulness, wakefulness, great wakefulness, wakeful dream, dream, dream wakefulness and sleep. In pure consciousness, when mind and jiva exist only in name, it is the seed state of wakefulness. We're talking here about the notions of a self and an external world. And there's an inherent inclination to, to believe in these notions. And uh, if, you've, if, you've, if you're coming to after having passed out or just even waking up, what, 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 what's happening is that these notions become apparent then. The notions of establishing who you are in relation to a world out there. When notions of I and this arise, I and this, uh, this is known, it is known as wakefulness. So that's when you wake up, you established, you get established in notions of I and this, all of this around. When these notions get strengthened by the memory of previous incarnations, it is great wakefulness. It's when you're fully awake. Um, you don't need to believe in previous incarnations here, just, just personal history, memory, memory of who you are, where you come from, your family, culture, society. This is great wakefulness. When the mind is fully awake to its own fancies and is filled with them, it is wakeful dream. I'm going to assume he, it's just what's meant here is just simply daydreaming or reverie when you're totally caught up in your own fancies. The false notions of experiences during sleep, which yet appear to be real, are dreams. So now we move from daydream to dreams. We're in the realm of sleep. In the dream wakeful state, one recalls past experiences as if they are real now. So uh, here we've got the dream wakeful sleep, we've got the dream wakeful state, which seems to be about having dreams which 
reflect or repeat what has happened previously in your everyday life. When these are abandoned in favour of total inert dullness, it is sleep. I think that's usually called deep sleep. These seven have their innumerable subdivisions. I'm sure they do. You could probably play around with this kind of categorization um, ad infinitum. But really what we've got here is the arising of the illusion or the delusion, the notions of I and the world appearance, and how these things, and how we're just caught along with them, caught, caught up in them from the moment, not only from the moment when we awake, but even during sleep as well. And uh, there doesn't seem to be much opportunity to awake from this delusion or this delu what's described here as a delusion that veils self-knowledge.